you put that on top here or at the bottom there? I know I can't remember how I like it. I think the mic confusing me. It's on the bottom. Okay. All right, that's it. I just saw I saw no David Sage come out. One, 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 one. Testing. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Bits of paper, bits of paper lying on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should I use this or, 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 or do the hook thing? They, they want to the hook up. I mean, this is sounding good, but I don't know how comfortable. No, it was working good. Yeah, it's good. That, no, what I'm saying, if the other one is working. Yeah, that would be better for me maybe. Hallelujah. I'm it's because it's, it's, it's turned all down all the way. Okay, I'm coming. So so this one, Ren, here I'll show you. So this one is seven on on channels one through sixteen it's seven but see it also has a but then i can also but they said channel seven yeah so you see it but then it was like yeah yeah you can adjust it there off again. All right. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. One, two, one, two. Hey.
You know what? You better start and pray. And, yeah, because a few of them coming in. This is sounding really good. I like this. I like this right where it's at here. That's real good. Everything is perfect there. Well, there we go. yeah, it sounds like it's on. Hmm? You could start on prayer and then I'll come. Oh, did it stop? There we yeah, go. Right Perfect. <laughs> One more people to come in. We got people online. We have questions online for Pastor Two, so when he gets a chance, he'll answer the questions. Those of you online, make sure to post your questions online, and I'll make sure to get them to the Pastor, and he'll answer them today before we leave. And uh, just welcome to Bunny Canyon. Uh, we're ready to have a wonderful time learning. <laughs> Maybe that's me. I'm clashing. It might be mine. Are we good? Okay. Now let's uh, let's get ready to pray. We'll pray and then get Pastor up here. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day you bless us with, Lord. We just thank you for these teachings that are coming, Lord, teaching us to grow up on how to mature and be proper Christians, dear Heavenly Father, how to properly serve you, dear Heavenly Father, how to properly get closer to you, Lord. We just thank you for all the tools that you give us, like fasting, praying, meditating on your word, dear Heavenly Father, to grow closer to you, because we know that was the plan in the beginning, was to grow closer to you, like with Adam and Eve, you walk and talk with them, Lord, and that's what we desire, is just you to continually walk and talk with us and be with us, dear Heavenly Father, and we ask that for those who are out in the world that aren't believing, Lord, like our friends and family, dear Heavenly Father, who are on the fence or just enjoying the world too much, dear Lord, and we ask that you just walk alongside them, Lord, bring people into their lives, dear Heavenly Father, that will just show them just the joy and peace that comes with with the the salvation of Christ, dear Lord Jesus, the free gift that you give out to Heavenly Father. And we just thank you for that, Lord. And we thank you for all the wonderful things that's going on in the church, Lord. We thank you for all the wonderful opportunity, opportunities that you give us, dear Heavenly Father. And we ask that you just continue to pr- uh, protect the school, continue to protect the church, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to have your way in this church, dear Lord Jesus. We just thank you and give you honor and glory for everything that you do, Lord, dear Lord. And we just ask these things in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And now, Pastor Khan. Amen, amen, Come amen. teach. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's it. Amen. Wonderful. How y'all doing? Amen. Good to have you on a Friday night. You could have been in the bar. But you chose to be here. <laughs> amen. You are in the right place at the right time. How many of you have been fasting? I thought you said you was going fast from last night to this morning. Amen. Beautiful, wonderful, good experience. Amen. It's a great experience. It's a joy. It actually actually gets you better, healthier, and all the rest of it. Um, Tonight, we we realize that um, some folks might be listening out on the air. Those of you that are out there on YouTube, um, what else we have? wherever, YouTube, Facebook, and so on and so forth, send in your questions, amen, we're dealing with fasting and praying, not fasting and sleeping, not fasting and resting, amen, not being on a diet, not trying your best to get slim and look pretty, because All of that will happen. (laughs) But let your motive be right. Let your motive be... um, Let your motive be in his supernatural will. Love you, brother. I'll call you back. (laughs) Yes. Let let, um, let you... your, Your motive, your attitude, and all of that be, amen, in the right direction. It's about fasting, praying consecration, it's about getting yourself closer in him, amen, it's about tightening your relationship, and like last night we say what, cleaning your pipes, amen, making yourself a vessel to honor, making yourself in a place uh, that 
God could easily use you and flow through you. So those are the areas we want to more delve into. Last night we spoke some of the natural, physical, raw stuff. Amen. That happens and occurs. No problem in getting back in the questions according to how it comes. It's not a problem. Amen. You teachers in here, you know that repetition is what learning is all about. Hallelujah. Uh, we want to look at two scriptures really quickly, if you all could help me get that and have a mic with you handy so that you could be in and everybody can hear. Make sure everybody hear you when you're speaking. Look for Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4 and one of you do Joel chapter 2 verse 15. And, and we're going to start right there. Ezekiel 9 and 4, Joel 2 and 15. Could we have that read loudly and clearly? Hallelujah. Praise God. E Ezekiel is down uh, yeah, after Isaiah, <laughs> Jeremiah, those guys. You say Joel 2.15? Yes, and Ezekiel 9 and 4. Joel 2.15 reads, Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate, consecrate and fast, call a sacred assembly. Amen. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Call a solemn assembly. Amen. And Zion is supposed to be where we live. <laughs> the mount of God. Amen. The city of God. The presence. And the church first needs to hear the trumpet blown. We blow it here and then we blow it from here. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 9 and 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sign and that cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. God is calling the church, God is calling men and women to cry, to mourn, to weep for the sins that are taking place around us. When the prophets of old went to God, they never said they, the people, have sinned. They always said we have sinned. Amen? And, and, and it's important. This is what, what intercessory is all about. To intercede is to put yourself in one's place. To feel what they feel and to feel their pains and their hurts. And God is calling his people to cry out. Amen. God is calling his people to mourn and to weep and to call a solemn assembly. I believe we have had too many years with dry altars. Too many years, amen, where people forgot how to cry, how to weep, how to mourn, how to feel for others and how to feel for the disastrous things that are taking place on planet earth. We are living in a day and a time when 10 hours a day on average by almost 70% of humankind is spent on thinking and doing, amen, food, sex, and money. Did you hear that? Food, sex, and money, about 10 hours in a day, go by in your minds that that's all <laughs> Is happening by the things you see, the conversations you hear, the advert uh, advertisements that are shown. Everything is about sex. Everything is about food, colors, and men's thoughts is about money and more money. Amen? When you take some of that time from 10 hours of those kind of thoughts and give God at least one or two, turn around and tell your neighbor, say, you're doing good. <laughs> You're doing all right. Amen? Okay, now that you're listening and I have your attention, let me say this. Prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. I'm saying it again. You can write it down. Prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. What do you mean, Pastor Khan? 
In Genesis 1 and 26, Charles, your favorite scripture. No, you don't. <laughs> you know. And God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the fowls that fly, the things that creep it, blah, 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 blah. All let them. And he was looking at Adam, Randy. That's the problem, you know. Because in Adam was Randy and Brother Williams and Michael Cohen and Phil and Daryl and Charles and Barbara and everybody, all of us, all of you, amen. We were in Adam, say in Adam. in Adam. So when God made the man and he let him loose in Eden, he said, let them, that's all of us, mankind, let them, mankind, have dominion over all the earth. So he exempted himself because, say this, God is a spirit. Say this also, the devil is a spirit. The devil is a spirit. He gave man, Daryl, a physical body from the earth that is made from the earth so man have the license to dwell on the earth and to subdue the earth and take over and have dominion. But who gave it to him? What man wants to do is to subdue, take over, and have dominion without God. And that's where the problem is. Because if God said, let them have dominion, anyone let you have, they're the boss. <laughs> see, you see the point? <laughs> so God is the ultimate boss. He is, amen, the controller. He is, the, but, but what he did, he wanted to exempt and make Satan illegal. So he made man legal and automatically, he being God, Say God is God. God, is God. He could do whatever, whenever. But you remember I told you last night, God will not without man. Man cannot without God. So when I say prayer, hallelujah, is given license and okay for heavenly interference, what's the connotation what does prayer have to do with it? Many of you have seen wrestling and you hear me talk about this already. And you saw when um, two guys fighting another two and you call it tag team. Well, once you're down here on this earth and you realize that God gave me the dominion and the authority. When Satan steps in, you know that he is illegal. And therefore, when he steps in and you have some harsh, hard, terrible periods going through, like when one guy is getting beat up or he's under pressure, who he's looking for? You ever see them? You, you know, I know they lie, but they keep stretching and stretching and the fella hit him on his head and he roll back down and they pull him and they drag him. And they, but he's really trying to make a tag. Amen? Think about prayer. Think about you. Down here. And God up there. And prayer is your telephone to glory. Amen. Amen. Prayer is your tag. And you can tag. Wouldn't you be glad to have a partner in a tag team contest that nobody could be? No situation, no sickness, no disease, no circumstance, nothing. Because all power belongs to your tag. Amen. So prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. And um, God wants to actually heal, deliver, and set man free. And if you understand this, you'll understand how it works. You know, it is God that work in us both to will and to do his good pleasure. We are also co-laborers. I don't want to run into all the scripture, but let me, those of you that are writing, you can write. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 9. Amen. And let me say this again. God wants to heal. God wants to deliver. God wants to cast out demons. 
God wants to set people free. He wants to mend the broken heart. But you have a problem. And you say, Pastor, God could have a problem. Yes, he does. He's not finding the right vessels. And we sometimes say, oh my gosh, I'm not seeing any miracle. I'm not experiencing the power of God. I'm not this and I'm not that. And, and, and a lot of people remember long ago. You know, long ago. Have you ever heard this comment? Long ago when I was in church, man, the power of God used to just break through. You used to actually feel it. I, I've seen people being delivered and this and that and the other. And then apparently you're not seeing as much. Well, there's a lot of reasons for that. One of them is that if you get a headache now, you just take a Tylenol. Huh? Also, we, 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 we have trust in medical science and breakthroughs, and some areas don't have that, so they depend more on God than on this. So we are dependent more or less on, uh, I could say the beggarly elements of the world, but I would not say that. I did not say that. I'm just saying that we sometimes could lean on human measures so we see less miracles. Is that okay, Daryl? That's one of the areas. But there are some areas where we need divine intervention. There are some areas in our ministry, preaching, laying on of hands, casting out demons, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, raising the dead, opening blind eyes, causing the wisdom of God to prevail and to protrude through us. God's problem is that he's not finding the quality of vessels because we are contaminated. And if you're contaminated, you, you know, if God wants to, pour, let's just say the Holy Ghost is like water and you want to pour water in something. Will you pour it out in, if you pour it out in something that is unclean, You see what I'm talking about? It messes it up. And today the church world is so weak and so wishy-washy and backboneless. They are no longer preaching sin, no longer preaching holiness, no longer preaching thus saith the Lord, no longer preaching that God is holy, so be holy as God is holy, be righteous as God is righteous. Those things are not preached. Everything is all right. Everything is... Pot a cake, pot a cake, bake me a cake. Some like it hot, some like it cold. Some like it in the pot, nine days old. Nobody's getting a fresh revelation and a fresh word from God because they're not spending quality time with God. Amen? What is God looking for? Turn your Bible, Second Timothy. Let me show you what God is looking for and what I'm really talking about. Second Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Those of you that are listening to me, keep your Bible with you. Look in your Bible. Write these scriptures down. Because they're not being preached from the pulpit much anymore. You can't find them on TV anymore. They're lost. Chapter 2 verse 20 and 21. But we... Loud and clear. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold or of silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use. Now we go, we, 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 we go, we, could we get in into that scripture? Could we get involved in that scripture? In a great house, in a great house, there's vessels of gold, silver, wood, clay, hay, stubble. I mean, you could go on with a list. All kinds of vessels in the house. Some to honor and some to dishonor. In a great house, in a palace, in a rich home, in some of our homes. I remember when my mama had uh, what we call back home a cabinet. How many of you remember the cabinet? You ever had a cabinet in America? I don't know. Oh, you know what a cabinet, yeah. You know where you put the china? Yeah. And the plates where the ribbons gold? 
And you set it up in that cabinet, and those children better don't go near there because they're gonna don't interfere with my china and my crystal. Huh? When grandma come, you know. But you see that that is for what? Special occasion. You better eat in a sanitary place. Eat in the normal paper plates and all the rest of it, and amen. And do your thing and throw it away and whatever if you don't want to watch, but don't, don't. Don't touch those. Amen? The house of God have people who strive in God and try to, try to get so close to God that God would rub off on them. Amen? Jesus said, Blessed are ye when men who hunger and thirst after righteousness. We need to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. We must want God. We must desire God. We must desire to pray and spend time in God. If you want to be a vessel of honor, amen. What, what he's actually saying is that when the normal situations come up, he could use the wood one. He could use the straw one. Amen. But when a blind eye come in, when a demon possessed coming, he's going in the cabinet. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all ain't talking back to me. He's going in the cabinet. He wants to go in the cabinet to find a fine way. Yeah. Amen. Somebody say, I want to be fine way. I want to be a vessel of honor that the master can use me. Let's read over the scripture. I, man, if I don't, pre- I have a whole load of stuff to preach, but if I ain't preach nothing else. I want to preach this. Read it again. But in, a gr- in a great house. But in a great house. Hold it close to your mouth. How? But in the great house. There are not only vessels of gold and of silver. There are not only vessels of gold and silver. There's weaker vessels. There are inferior vessels. Go ahead. Word and earth. And some to honor and some that to word honor. and earth, uh, amen. You know, earth is telling you about the flesh, self. Some, some, some Christians live in the flesh. They're earthly, sensual, and devilish. Amen. Read, read, read. We're going good. Read, keep that mic close to your mouth. I want the people to hear because I want faith to come. Faith cometh by hearing. Hit, hit it hard. Same verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We pound that thing. I want to milk it. But in a great house. In a are, great house. There are not only vessels of gold. And not of only the mighty, the powerful, and the special. There's the inferior as well. Because in the church you have babes in Christ, mm-hmm. carnal minded, and spiritually mature. I hope you are listening to me need, amen, and have a desire to get with God so that you can no longer be a babe in Christ, no longer be fleshy, fleshy, amen. We have too much humans, (laughs) amen. We are too fleshy, we are too selfish, we are too sensual. Everything is about I, me, and myself. Amen. We want people to delve from the now known to the unknown, from the natural to the supernatural. Amen. And get in the spirit. Say get in the spirit. Oh yeah, we need to come to that place. So in a great house, in the church, in the house of God, there are vessels of honor, vessels of gold and silver, some to honor and some to dishonor, wood and earth. Read now from there. But also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. Mm Mm-hmm. If a man therefore purge himself from... Now, you got to read Timothy real well. And when you read Timothy real well, you'll realize the kind of things he's talking about to purge yourself. Purge yourself from fleshly lust. Purge yourself from selfish desire. Purge yourself, amen, from hypocrisy. Purge yourself from vain babblings and janglings. Purge yourself, amen, from the things of the world. Purge yourself. If you want to be a good minister, you're going to preach... Amen. Instant. In season. 
out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with long suffering, all long suffering and doctrine. You, you, you let no man despise your youth. You purge yourself, uh, amen, from what people think of you and what they don't think. Purge yourself, amen, from the things of the world. Purge yourself. Read, read, read for me. Give me more. If a man therefore purge himself of these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, mm-hmm. sanctified, and meet for the master's Woo! use. When the ma- I told you, God wants to heal. God wants to cast out devils. God wants to deliver. God wants to raise the dead. He wants to do it. But he's looking for a vessel. He's looking for a vessel. He's looking for a vessel that is sanctified. He's looking for a vessel that is open and clean. He's not looking to put himself to be clogged up in somebody. He wants to run freely through you. And this is what fasting and praying does. It cleans the vessel. It sanctifies the vessel. Amen. And when those special occasions come. When special occasion, you know, I love it. I love it. The Lord is just taking me in some areas. Do you remember when Jesus sat with the woman at the well and he spoke and the boys went out to buy food, victuals, old English. <laughs> and they came back and he was sitting there for hours and he was talking and, you know, they went a long journey. You know what it was like. You didn't have no car or nothing, you know, just, you, you, those guys went together. They all went. I don't, don't even know, even know why all of them went. Judas had the money. They went to buy food. But they all had to go. Thank God they did go because Jesus, you, you know, the Bible says, and Jesus must needs go through Samaria. Oh, oh boy. Jesus must needs go through. He, he had a need to. Now listen. That was not a shortcut. That was a long cut. If you study the geographics of it. That's the long way around. But he had to meet that woman. <laughs> oh yes. He had to meet that woman on that specific day. But that's not what I want to talk about. Because I could get carried away right there. I really could. <laughs> they came back. And this is the thing, that, this, is what, this is the part that I love, and it's always in me. As a matter of fact, that's what's keeping me during this period and during this time to come. The thing that's keeping me and the thing that's on my mind. If you say, Pastor, what the Lord is saying to you, I'll tell you exactly. is exactly what Jesus said to his disciples. They were offering him food and thing, and all that, you know, he said, he said I, I have meat to eat that you know not of. <laughs> Baby, that is, that, that is in my spirit day and night. If you want to know what your pastor is meditating on right now, what he's thinking about, where he's going, what he's seeing, I have meat to eat that you know not of. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me while it is day. Because the night is coming. But no man can. I need to work the works of God while it is day. Because night is upon us, beloved. And because night is upon us, I'm looking to get everything that I could get from God. Every inch of power, every inch of intimacy. Amen. Everything that God called me on this earth and put me on this planet to do. I want to see it done. Everything that I miss, everything that the canker worm has eaten, everything that the devil stole, I'm about to take it back in the name of Jesus. And I'm here to encourage you to take it back. comes from fasting and praying. Jesus didn't want no food. No, sir. He wanted to get people saved, delivered. And Jesus didn't have no man-made agenda and program. Jesus had God's purpose and plan. And that's where we need to be. Could you say amen? You must understand how important Your body, your flesh, this container is to God. This container, it is of vital importance to him. We used to sing a song back home. He said, knowing not, knowing not, ye are the temple. Knowing not, knowing not, ye are the temple. Filled with might, filled with power, filled with glory. Filled with might, filled with power, and filled with glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's knowing not ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And I know we talk a lot about spirit. 
And that's important. That's wonderful. But I want to tell you, you need to come to a place where you keep in your physical body, your flesh under, mortifying the deeds of the body, dying daily, saying like Brother Paul, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but it's Christ that lives in me. I'll buy my own tape. Your body is so important, so very important, amen. Do you know your body is so important that if, 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 you, if, you, if your body decides, amen, that it give up on this earth, you have to leave? Yeah, you're going to have to change residence if your body give up. Because the real you is your spirit, say amen. amen. Yeah, but your body is vitally important. But we have this treasure, says Paul. But we, those of you that are writing, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You know what I call that? Say treasure. treasure. Earthen, vessels. earthen vessels. Hear what the treasure is. The treasure is the Holy Ghost, the life of God. The earthen vessel or the clay pot is your physical body. We have a treasure in this clay pot. In other words, eternity lives in time. Eternity lives in time. Who's time? Your body. Eternity is God. This is the house he wants to dwell in. Clean it up. Make it clean. Make it holy. Amen. So that he'll be happy to dwell in it. Praise the Lord. Fasting helps the triune man to align, to align correctly. He puts the triune man in perspective because when a person is born, amen, they're born and they believe. And you can see the world now, the trend of the world is what? My body, how I look. You understand? Some of the people they call pretty, Lord have mercy. Now you can't tell me this girl is so fine and she's, and she's 108 pounds. You could just take her and fling her away. <laughs> and then they lie. They come on TV and they lie. They have them uh, uh, looking like they're biting McDonald's. They don't eat nothing. Amen. They look like anorexic. But the world wants you to believe <laughs> whatever they want you to believe. Amen? And the trend today is look skinny. Amen? And I'm not saying don't try. I, all I'm saying, try to be healthy. But they put the body first. A man that is in the flesh and in sin puts the body first. Look at most of those guys who do things contrary to God's will. Look at their fine, look at them. All buff. They fool some girls sometimes. Yeah, there are some girls who's looking out for a nice date or something. See one man jump out of the car. One girl told me she had, was having coffee in Hollywood and she's having coffee and she decides she wants, you know, a nice date. She saw this good looking hunk of a man came out the car and then he went around by the door and kissed his his friend, goodbye, another man. You all ain't saying nothing. All they're thinking about is the physical body. They say body, mind or soul, and spirit. But when you are born again, God flipped the script. He turns the table around. And you come to realize I'm a spirit that possesses a soul and lives in a body. Amen? So I'm spirit... When you are born again and when you begin to fast and pray, God helps you during those periods to put it in its right perspective. Spirit first, soul and mind after, body last. What it means? It means that your spirit must become king. When your spirit is king, you do God's will. 
When your, 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 your mind is a, is a servant and your body is a slave, whether your body is hungry, whether your body is tired, whether your body is feeling to have sex, feeling to eat food, your spirit could say, no, shut up! And he got to stay in subjection. That's what the king does. Amen. Did you hear me? Your spirit must become king, your soul a servant, and your body a slave. You must become a slave. Your body. Learn to shut up your body. Because, because the fight that you have is your soul and body cooperates against your spirit. Think about it. So your enemy is not so much on the outside. Your enemy is within you. According to Michael Jackson, look at the man in the mirror. Amen. Amen. When you fast and pray and your spirit becomes ahead of the game, amen, you could say like Jesus, not my will, but thine will be done. All right, let me give you a few things that you could write down quickly. Fasting coupled with prayer brings godly intimacy. Fasting coupled with prayer brings godly intimacy. One. Number two. Fasting and prayer increases spiritual capacity. Fasting and prayer increases spiritual capacity. Number three, fasting helps to clean the mind and the body. Literally, for real, it cleans the mind. You think clearer. You have less stress. Do you know by the food some people eat, it affects their attitude? For real. Amen. Some people get on hoggish. I'm not telling you don't eat pork. I'm just saying some people act crazy. Some people have tendencies on account of what they're eating. It says you are what you eat, but you really act out what you eat. This is why God gave us food to eat from the very beginning. Amen. What's right food to eat? And somebody told me, well, I want to be strong like an ox, man. I want to eat, be strong like a bull. And he started to eat a whole set of beef. And I asked him, what does the ox eat? Anyway, I'd leave you with that. I'm not telling you don't eat this and don't eat that. That's not what I preach. Don't eat this and don't drink that and don't... No, 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 no. I'm not telling you that. Be moderate in what you do and try to do more of God's will than anything else. Amen? Number four. Prayer alone cannot break bondages. Prayer with fasting break bondage. Why? Because this kind go not out but by prayer and fasting. When you want to break the barriers, break yokes and break chains... Amen. When you want to break through in the spirit, when you're praying and your prayer don't seem to be going nowhere, when you're teaching, preaching, witnessing, doing whatever, amen, laying hands and nothing is happening, you need to put some fasting in that. Fasting puts some oomph, unction to function on this junction. Put that in a poem. <laughs> yeah. So prayer alone can't break those bondages. It takes prayer and fasting. Some bondages and habits. Let's talk about some bondages and habits. What are we talking about? Television, drugs, alcohol, pornography, gambling, lust, cheating, etc., etc., etc. One man named out the, the, the fruits of the Spirit. He said there are nine fruits of the Spirit. He didn't have teeth. And then nine fruits of the spirit. And then he said, Lord, he said, look, I see about 16 fruit deeds of the flesh. <laughs> because he had already told the boys outside, stop playing with the marbles and stuff like that. And they said, where in the Bible tell you that? He said, marble not. <laughs> he said, marble not. He, he was calling everything wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> also, number six, let me give you this. You attract God by fasting and praying. You attract God. 
Would you like to look attractive in the eyes of your father? Would you want him to be pleased with you? Would you want him to say things like what he said about Job? Have thou considered my servant, Job? A man who stands right? Amen? So it brings intimacy, it opens capacity, and amen, it brings you to a place, hallelujah, of attraction. You become good looking in the eyes of God. You become more and more the apple of his eye, he, he, the center of his joy. You become his jewel, and, and, and hence the reason why he can use you for special occasions. Hallelujah. Not only that, he can release stuff to you. He can release blessings. He can release anointings on you because once you have a relationship with him and you get to know him, he gets to know you. You know, you always talk to your friend and you tell your friend what you're going to do. Hallelujah. That's how some men get more revelation than others because, you know, Abraham was in a place where he was called friend of God and what God said when he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Two angels already dispatched, and God said, look, I better hold back here on this hill. You know what? How could I do it without telling my friend? Can you say this with me? God does nothing. God does nothing. Except he reveals it to his prophets. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. So you attract God by fasting and praying. Because fasting and praying causes you to deny yourself. You deny yourself. You deny your flesh. You deny the I and the me. Amen. For him. For him. <laughs> and he looks down at that and he said, oh, she must really love me. She must really love me. I mean, she is saying no to those burgers. <laughs> she, he is saying no to the things that he loves most. Like I tell you, the things that we love, food, money, sex, and when you put aside all of that and take it out of your mind and you go towards God, God is saying you love me. You know, it's like sitting before Jesus on the shore and he, 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 he bake up his fish and all of that. What Peter was looking for? And he came and he said, hey, looky, looky, Peter, eat, man, don't worry. You love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than sex? Do you love me more than your appetites? Do you love me more than pornography? Do you love me more than television? Do you love me more than drugs? Do you love... Love us down me more than these? Love us down me more than the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, power? Do you love me more than your money? Or do you wake up in the morning counting how much more you got before you talk to Jesus? I'm going to be real with you. I'm right now doing a, a kind of an investment and it's making a little few dollars and doing pretty well. Praise the Lord. I like it. I like it. And sometimes the devil come on a Friday morning because every Friday morning they pay out. And he comes, hey, aren't you going to look see what you got? I say, no, I'm going to talk to Jesus first. <laughs> Did you hear me? you got to put God first because God is a jealous God. And all those things that you're counting on and all those things that you, you, you're checking out, you wouldn't have nothing, you wouldn't get nothing without the blessing of God. And if you do, it will not last. God wants you to prosper, but he wants you to prosper as your soul prospers. Because when your soul prosper and you get mature in the realm of the spirit, you'll know what to do with it. You'll know how to handle it. You'll know how to use it. Amen? I was looking, I, I, I thought about saying this. Nicole, if you're listening to me, don't come back home crazy and stuff. And, you know, I've got to talk about somebody. Hallelujah. Nicole's love language is touch. It goes in this order. Touch. Very huggy, huggy. Amen. Gifts. And honeydew. 
Those are three love languages. Amen. Touch, hold her, hug her. Amen. Bring gifts. And it don't have to be no big money gift because she didn't marry Boaz. I told her who I was. It's brokers. <laughs> you know, everybody say, oh, no, I, I found my Boaz. I say, no, you found her brokers. And I said it like, you know, the way I would say it. <laughs> and um, uh, uh, her, her next love, her third love language would be for me to help her. And she have no problems with that. I help. I help my wife. I don't see it as helping my wife. I just, I'm living in a house. I help. I do. Ain't got no man work and woman work with me. I do. I just do. I don't fuss. I don't argue about it. I enjoy doing it. My wife hardly ever have to cook. I do anything. I wash dishes. I do clothes. It doesn't matter. Because I love her too. Like crazy. Amen? Now you say, Pastor, what's your love language? <laughs> I'll tell you what's my love language. Quality time and communication. Quality time and communication. And you would say in your mind, well, what does that have to do with fasting and praying and what you're teaching, Michael Kahn? Well, I want to ask you a question. What do you think is God's love language? Sila. Sila. And I'm thanking God every day that I'm becoming more and more like my father. Because his love language must be quality time and communication. I could close with that. That was good. Quality time and communication. He wants you to talk to him and he wants you to be in his presence. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, I'm going to give you some extra still. Hallelujah. Fasting will release within you the faith that moves mountains. That's what we all desire. All of us want power. Every single human on this earth desire power. Yes. And, and, and you know, again, you have to refer, Charles, to that same scripture. Let them have dominion. But man is looking for power in every way. It's just like love. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for power in all the wrong spaces. That's what's going on. Power comes from God. He's the source and the resource of power. And he has released that to mankind. Mankind have contaminated that. As a matter of fact, committed high treason and give it over to the devil. No wonder why the devil, on when Jesus fasted and prayed, he could tell Jesus, all these will I give you if you just bow down. Why? Because man took the dominion, the keys of authority and the power to get wealth and everything and give it to the devil. And some of us complaining today. You see those people, those entertainers doing their signs and stuff. They sold themselves to the devil. They have money. Yes, they can get money. He got money to give them. But your God is more powerful. You just don't know it. Amen. Somebody have to reveal it to you. He gave you power and authority and dominion. God gave you the power to get wealth. When Solomon went before God, he said, give me understanding and give me, you know, wisdom. So I'm sitting on the throne of my father, David, and, I, you know, these people, is so great a people. They're your people. I, I, I need, I'm a young man. And God said, because of your attitude, because of your motive, because of your good heart, I'm going to give you more than that, baby. Don't you want God to give you more than that? Uh, don't you want God to give you more than that? Don't you want to be like David? After David went with Bathsheba and Nathan said, this man could have, and God said, and Nathan is revealing to him, this man had everything that he needed. This man took the man one ewe lamb and he killed it and ate it and spread it out because a traveler. That traveler is a devil, a demon, spirit, traveled and talked to David's mind. He lusted and pulled her in. You know, the king gets what the king wants. But you could get what you wanted and lose what you had. That's a message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so when David did that, Nathan told him, 
And God blessed this man, David, with all of that. And he was willing to give him such and such. I can't even tell you what the such and such is of God. Much and much and anything more. God wants to bless his people. Amen. And I'm telling you when you live clean and you live holy and you live right, God have a way of not man. Not just he takes you from just meeting your needs and solving your problems and he take you into vistas because God is unlimited. He takes you into that unlimited place where he blesses you healthy, wealthy, and wise. Where he blesses your spirit, soul, and body. Where he heals your body. Where he heals your mind. Where he clean, cleanses you. Amen. And he anoints you. And he gives you the desires of your heart. Have you ever thought about the desires of your heart? What your heart desires? Can I break it down for you? They that delight themselves in the Lord. He shall grant them the desires of... You see, when you delight yourself in the Lord, Daniel, you keep delighting in the Lord. You start living in his presence. You have intimacy with him. He reveals himself to you. Your thoughts begin to come his thoughts. Your word become his word. He starts living his life through you and you become a vessel. So your desires now become his desires and he will surely grant you his desires. Can we come to a place where our desires is like that of the Lord? Oh, praise God. Exodus 34, 28. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me give you two or three of these. Oh, I got to close now anyway. What time it is? Huh? So I, I, I gave you an hour or uh, almost. Let me, let me give, give me five more minutes. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Somebody read for me Exodus 34, 28. You know, last night I told you to drink a lot of water when you're fasting. You remember that? So those of you who remember that, don't get mad at me tonight because I want to show you something else. <laughs> read. Give me some volume here. This one, mic. It's off. Try it. No? See yours. You got it? You have it? Read it. Oh, he got it. Okay. So he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote on tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Do you think that's a mistranslation? <laughs> it's almost in every translation. He stayed in the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights. He ate no bread, meaning food, and he drank no water. Scientifically, you can't live like that. But I want to reveal something tonight to you. When you are in the presence of God, you can't die. <laughs> so, so, don't, don't say, well, Pastor Khan, you told us to drink water. I don't know why I'm telling you to drink water. <laughs> you can keep that. Amen. I, I want you to drink a lot of water. And I told you, I myself spent a lot of times fasting with no water. I didn't die. Might have been in the presence of the Lord. Huh? When you're in the presence of God, you cannot die. God is not the God of death. He's the God of life. Hence the reason why he said, I'm the God of. <laughs> Amen. So Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights up in that mountain. Amen. In fasting and praying, no food, no water. And when he came down, the man was shining like a light that people had to turn away from him. Lord, if you could shine like Moses. Amen. If you could come out of this fasting and praying and the anointing of God upon you, when the demons see you, they start trembling. They start falling out. People start vomiting. Amen. And just his sick being healed and delivered. The oppressed coming back to themselves into their right state of mind. 
We can fast and pray and have results like this. Let me prophesy. I believe God is about to do something in these last days. In these closing moments of time. Amen. That is unprecedented. I believe we are about to see the authentic power of God spread through the world. Spread from the church into the world to save, deliver, and set free. I believe the time has come and is upon us now where God is about to work the miraculous, where he is about to find some clean pipes and clean vessels, vessels of honor that he can work through, amen, and establish himself. And people will no longer be asking where is God, but they're going to feel and sense and see the presence of God they're going to know that God is God and he always will be God and he's the same yesterday today and forevermore I do not believe in just the God of the Bible and a God of Bible days I don't believe in that I believe in a God amen who is God all by himself I believe you know, some folks say the days of miracle. I don't believe in the days of miracle. I believe in the God of miracles, who's a miracle worker from Genesis to Revelation, who was, is, and is to come, who is present. I believe in a God who is limitless and authentic and powerful, and he's about to work. Are you ready? Are you ready? That's the God we're serving, beloved. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, angel. Angel food kept Elijah, Elijah for 40 days. Yeah. Not only that, give him more speed than a horse. Mm -hmm. He was running. Amen. God came and make some cake or something for him and say, eat that. You have a lot of time to move. When God feed you, you're well fed. Oh, glory to God. When God keep you, he gives you staying power, keeping power. He gives you speed. He gives you that anointing and that grace. Amen. Baby, after this fast, let me tell you, when God starts to manifest himself to you and somebody asks you anything, just tell them I paid for it. Did you hear what I said? I say, if you really commit yourself to God and people start seeing the power of God revealing and manifesting through you and they ask you any question, you just tell them, I, I, I paid for it. I paid for it while you were sleeping. I paid for it while you was eating and drinking. I paid for it while you were having a so-called good time. Amen? So don't, don't, don't mess with my glory if you don't know my story. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus, full of and controlled by the Holy Spirit, amen, was led of the Spirit to go into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And after 40 days, he was a hunger. But have you noticed something with Jesus? Before Jesus got hungry, the devil is the one that gave up. The devil hit him three, shoot three bullets at him, bam, bam, bam. And Jesus said, it is written. It is written. Thus said the Lord. It is written. Guess what? Satan said, I better leave this. Now. I'm, I'm going to move out for a while. He got tired. When you're fasting and praying, don't look like sad sack. Don't try to impress people that you're fasting and praying. Do it in the closet. Do it in secret. The reward will come openly. God is going to reward you openly. The blessing of God will fall upon you. Amen? Amen. Um, in closing. Elijah did it. Jesus did it. Moses did it. We are living in a day and a time when there was a lot of national and international global problems. Amen? Amen? We are dealing with conflicts. We're dealing with uh, shortage of food. We're dealing with inflation. We're dealing with wars and rumors of wars. We're dealing with some touchy subjects. We're dealing with people marching now and coming up against, amen, folks that stand for pro-life. And people want to stand up against it and say we are to kill babies. 
We are living in that time. And we are fighting all kinds of different demons. Let us look to God for our answers. Yes. Yes. You say, Pastor, can I make a difference? Yes, you can. You can't stop the will of God and stop things from happening. But God's people can be protected. God's people can walk in the midst of the chaos and the problems. And be shielded by God. And be empowered by God. And impact society. And make a difference in society. What are you saying pastor? I'm saying that in your Bible. The Bible is written. It says and these are for examples. When the Jewish people faced a situation where they were going to kill all the Jews and Haman dig a big deep hole to bury them. Esther said, stop eating. We're going to do a three days fast. Amen. And after our fast and our prayer and we talk to God like my uncle Mordecai taught me to, I'm going to march in where the king said don't come. And if I perish... I perish, but I'm going to see my king. And I want you to know that if you go meet your king, one moment with the king makes a difference. One moment in the king's presence, amen, can change your life. One moment in the king's presence can change your community. One moment in the king's presence, you can make a difference with fasting and praying. One more, Jehoshaphat, surrounded by armies, he feared. They said, we are outnumbered. He said, but we're going to fast. He said, the dog's going to fast. Cat's going to fast. Amen. The cattle are going to fast. Everything, nobody eating. Wouldn't you like to have a government who's going to shut their stupid mouth, stop lying, scheming, and cheating, and talking about change, who will stand up like Jehoshaphat, Call a nationwide three days fast and say let's fast and pray and talk to God about it. Now, listen, if you say God, mean God. As far as I'm concerned, all of them just talk God. And quote scriptures to get your votes. We need leadership who will mean God. We need leaders who will stand up and mean what they say and say what they mean and act upon it. Amen. And influence the minds of the nation to turn to God. For if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways and pray, I'm going to hear. God is a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. Yes. Hallelujah. And I've said enough. And I hope that somebody container could be filled up. I pray that somebody would be touched tonight in Jesus' name. I, I want to pray before I answer those questions. I just want to ask God to bless you. And those of you that are not saved, I pray that you open your heart to Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other name given under heaven whereby a man can be saved but by the name of Jesus. Say, Lord. Come into my heart. Forgive my sins. Fill me with your Holy Ghost. Write my name in the book of life. Make me your child. I confess you as my Lord. I believe in my heart that you are the Savior of the world. Save me today. And give me your grace to live for you in Jesus' name. Father, let your blessing be upon your people, upon the nation. Individually and collectively. National and global. I speak forth your word. I loose your word in the atmosphere. I decree and I declare. No weapon form against your church and your people will prosper. I bring Daniel and Sarah before you, Lord. And, and, and Randy and those that are going. And Brother Williams, those that are going in the city tomorrow. I pray that you cover them under your blood. In the name of Jesus, I pray that mighty things going to happen. I pray that they will see exploits because they know you, Father. And they know that you're mighty to save and you're strong to deliver. Continue to bless the church. Bless the school. Bless the teachers. Bless the ministers of this church. Continue to raise them up. And help us, oh God, to have unity. No discord. No dissimulation. No sedition. We curse those spirits. In the name of Jesus. 
and we lose healing and joy and peace. Everyone walk through these doors, save them, and set them free in Jesus' name. Come on, praise the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. Oh, okay. Mm. Paul, maybe I can't answer that one. You know Paul is a scholar. <laughs> uh, his question is, how often should we fast and should we wait on the Lord first before we fast? Beautiful. <clears throat> a lot of people, sometimes <laughs> folks say, um, I come and preach for me. And preachers say, um, well, let me pray about it. But if you look at the scripture, God said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. You already got the command. Amen. I've gone to places and preach where eagles dare. <laughs> I mean, seriously, where my life was on the line, where what you all call machete and stuff like that was pulled, and they said, I'm going, I'm going to do so, and they, they promised all kind of thing to do. And I was right there, and I said, you can't do unless he says so. Amen. You are already commissioned to go and preach. Prayer and fasting is a must if you're going to grow. So the fact is, how often should we fast and pray? It's according to your, uh, not just ability, but also your strength, your health, and stuff like that. You have to be wise in what you do. But I would recommend regular fasting since I'm telling you it's a healthy thing. It's very healthy. Some folks would do a three days every three months. I used to do a lot of those and, and, until my body start asking, hey, it's time to fast. How many of you did exercise for a period of time? I'm not talking about now. <laughs> you, know, you know when you was young, you, you do your thing? Amen? Okay. Your body becomes disciplined and it actually says, it's time. Let's do it. It's the same way with fasting. Amen? And if you develop a regiment and you develop a religious attitude towards, and when I say religious, I don't mean it in the bad way, uh, you know, to prayer, prayer and fasting, you must. Men ought always, men ought always, say always, always. to pray and not to faint. Amen? So we need to pray consistently, continuously, all the time. But I'm saying that when you couple it with fasting, it becomes more effective and more powerful. And you, the individual, becomes much more effective and more powerful. So the question is really, how bad do you want him? <laughs> how much of him you desire? And how much of a price you want to pay. Amen. And there's going to come a time. I know it's going to be difficult for some that are just trying. Amen. But at least you're trying. At least you're making some hours a day. Three days. Whatever. Amen. Keep trying. Keep plugging it. And you'll find yourself. If you put prayer in there. Talk to God. When you get hungry. Pray and drink water. Pray. God is going to fill you up. When the thoughts come through your mind, no, it's not just, you're not just dealing with natural things here. You're dealing with spiritual things. You're dealing with the enemy who plays strongholds in your mind. You're also dealing with self, flesh. You're dealing with acids and chemicals. Amen. And it starts haunting and moving and ro rolling up in your stomach. And your body is disciplined to eat at certain times and you're going to feel it. It's natural. It's normal. But you've got to get over that in the name of Jesus. Pray it out. Pray it out. And you'll realize you could make a little more and make a little more. Amen? Now, I don't want you to kill yourself. I don't want you to say, Pastor Ken, make me fast and I'm suffering with blood sugar and high blood pressure and stuff and I couldn't do this. Your faith will tell you. Your relationship with God. Me, I'm the kind of person I could have all kind of stuff and I'd say, Lord, I'm yours, you are mine, and this is it. I'm, I'm, I'm going all in, amen, and I got that kind of faith, amen, 
Uh, and you know, if in case you all see me in a box or something, tell them I ain't there. I don't look pretty. Don't worry. I'm going to look good. <laughs> I'll be with the Lord for sure. Because I ain't living for nobody else. Amen. So I would say as regular as you could, how you feel it. But keep encouraging yourself. Don't let the enemy talk to you. You need to discern when the enemy is speaking to you and telling you you can't. Amen. Because really and truly you could. You could. And, and, and if fasting is a healer. Actually, let me tell you this. Some scientists and doctors and stuff, some really good brain, neurosurgeons and stuff, high-quality brain, they are actually using fasting now for healing. They tell you, go on a water fast. And people are recovering from all kinds of devious ailments. And I'm really believing that, and I'm glad they reached to that place because once you start fasting, somehow or the other, uh, you drop off all this food and stuff like that, you realize that you kind of get a little more spiritual. And it could be good if we continue throwing the word of God, the truth, out in the air. Somebody who is open might catch it. Amen? Anything else? Any contributions? Any word, any thought? Yes, Daniel. Yes. That's right. See, Daniel wasn't here last night, but he's saying the same thing. <laughs> that's what, that's what we that's the scripture I was talking about. Not if you fast, he said when you fast, so fasting is a must. Amen. Fasting is a must. Men ought always to pray and fast. And this kind, we all want power. But the powerful things, the great things of God could only happen through prayer and fasting. Did not his disciples try with that young man? The man that bought his son, yeah, they, they tried. And he had some kind of epilepsy. You know, we have nice names for it. A, C, B, C, B, true for you. Jesus just called them devils. A, B, D, and all kind of thing. Amen. He, he, he said, come out of him. Because the man said he foams, he falls in the water. And, and the man said, how come? I took him to your disciples, but they couldn't do nothing. And Jesus, look at them. <laughs> how, how long I'm going to be with you? How long I'm going to suffer you? And he just looked at the child and said, come out. And the devil had to go. So they asked him, how did that happen? And he explained to them, and that's when he said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, be thou removed hence. Not doubting in your heart, nothing shall be impossible. He said, nevertheless, but this kind goeth not out. This kind, this kind of power, this kind of an anointing, this kind of grace and glory goeth not out, but by praying and fasting. Mm-hmm. Well, well, you know, in Daniel chapter 1, actually, was the one where he was doing the, the, the eating without the meats and the wines and all of that, is in chapter 1, where he said, prove me for 10 days. Yeah, and that was not really a total fast. But the other one, when he was praying for revelation to come from God to him, and, 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 and the demon blocked the angel with the answer, he went for 21 days. And sometimes folks say, I'm going on a Daniel fast. And I honestly, greatest, now, now hear me well, greatest scholars, much more precious than I am. <laughs> Amen? They speak of the Daniel fast. But I, I, I'm just like, you fast. You pray. Amen? I, 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 Daniel fast. In that, and can I tell you something about that Daniel thing? The truth is, the Bible tells you, 
when, Michael, when, when the angel came down, he said, hey, from the very first day you set your heart to watch God, I heard, and the answer was there. So Daniel wasted so <laughs> let, me not, let, me not, let me not go there. The truth is the prayer was answered from the very moment. His heart was, his attitude and his heart was in the right place. God hears you. But there's between heaven and earth where things happen. And Jesus gave us the keys for that. Whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. So in the second heaven, there's a war going on. Amen? And once you pray and release from here, it's released from there. Doubting nothing. Waiting, amen, and watching over the word like God watch over his word to perform it. It will happen in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And, 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 and when you talk to God, don't just talk to God. Talk to the devil. Some of us, we talk to God a lot and we don't talk to the devil. And Jesus spoke more about hell than heaven. In, in uh, Joel 2.28 where it talks about in those latter days, God's going to be pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. You know, your young women are going to prophesy. Your young men are going to have visions. Your old men are going to dream dreams. Do you think that it's a reciprocal? Of, I mean, we're already there. We're in the latter days, right? Do you think it's a reciprocal kind of an event where he's pouring his spirit out on all flesh? And as we go and we start to pray for certain situations or people or whatever it is, our prayers are getting answered exponentially fast compared to maybe in days gone by? You mean when we fast and pray? Okay, well, you're, okay, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not fasting right now with, with everybody right now, right? But um, I did fast at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. um, not that that makes any difference. Um, but I'm just saying, because we are in those latter days, and he is pouring out his spirit right now, mm -hmm. Do you think as we pray, I mean, fasting. Oh, okay, I'm, okay, now I'm understanding you better. Okay. Uh, would he answer quickly, things yeah, will happen more effectively now? And yeah, okay. All right, let me, let me explain that scripture. Uh, when Joel said, in the last days, God's going to pour the spirit upon all flesh, what Peter actually did on the day of Pentecost is to borrow that. That was a borrowed statement that he used it, but because it's the word of God, and the word of God is impregnated with the life of God, Peter used it and it was effective. But it's actually for this time. This is the last day. This is the period. So this is why I believe that this is the time, as it was in the beginning, so it shall be in the ending. This is the church. So at the end of the church age, going to be like the beginning of the church age, and the church age, although she was in her infancy, she was powerful, greatly powerful. She have had 2,000 years to mature. She's going to be raptured more powerful than when she was a baby. Ooh, Jesus, Lord, help me. Did you hear what I say? I believe that the kind and quality and authenticity of power that God is going to release, because God always outdo himself. I believe we're going to see stuff that we never heard about. Did he not say, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it come to the heart and understanding of man, the things that God hath prepared for those that love him? Do you love him? We're about to see stuff. Lovers is about to see stuff. Amen? So yeah, things going to happen. Great things going to happen. Amen. Anything? That's it? All hearts and minds are clear. Now I go back to Baptist. All hearts and minds are clear. Hallelujah. God bless you. <laughs> God keep you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for looking at us. Thanks for tolerance. Amen. And those of you who think I ball too much, I'm just happy. Amen. I'm just, I'm just grateful to God. I'm excited about the things of God. Uh, and, and, and that's how God used me. If God used you in a different way, no problem, hallelujah. Just let him use you. Let the Lord work through you, whoever, wherever you are at. Let God use you. You be you, amen? And God will bless you. Be the best you can be for the Lord. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Daniel, you have a mic there? Who have a mic? Somebody with a microphone. Somebody dismiss us.
Praise the Lord. Yeah. Father, we thank you for your word is sharper than a two-edged sword. And Lord, uh, rightly divided, we just give thanks that we can understand this, not only this topic, but how we are to apply your word in this moment of our lives yes. and to this generation, Father God. We thank you for um, allowing us to be in your presence again. Thank you for the, uh, the abundance of biblical knowledge and scriptural knowledge and uh, proper application, Lord, so we can live it right here, right now, and make it make sense to us and to our family. Father, we ask you bless your people, those here and those online, that they would just feel your presence, that they would continue to demonstrate faith and say that they need you more than they need food. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Love you. God bless you. Amen.